Kelly Kroll joining me now. She covers the Braves on a daily basis. And Kelly, thanks for being with us from your hotel room there in Miami. You guys have been on some kind of uh, roadie, but I want to ask you, in your opinion, why have the Braves been playing so well, really, since the 1st of June? Well, I, I think it was the combination of a number of guys all finally starting to hit their stride and get going. You look at the month that Austin Riley had, which was absolutely historical within the franchise. And then you got Dansby Swanson got hot. You had a few pitchers get on a roll and start to really settle into their groove. I think there's no denying that the um, bringing Michael Harris up and putting him in center field allowed at the time Adam Duvall to finally move over to left field. And you've just seen the difference that um, the outfield and the defense can be for this team. And I think that that's a combination as well as uh, Spencer Strider. The addition to him and solidifying that five spot in their rotation ha has been a big part of what they've been able to do over the last month and a half, as you mentioned. And Kelly, Spencer Strider could very easily be the rookie of the year in the mm -hmm. National League. I know that there was some talk about potentially limiting his innings. I and mean, maybe that's why the there was the addition of Jake Odorizzi. What makes Spencer so special? Oh, goodness. Well, you talk about he's it's 95 to 100 easy gas and he's still got that deception of the league really not knowing who he is yet and um i think all of that is a big part of it um and he's also figuring out how to pitch it's not just throwing heat anymore for him. He's he started to figure out, along with the help of Travis Darno behind the plate, the sequencing that is going to be able to work for him. And I, and I think when guys see him for the first time, it's just, wow, um, this, this is going to, his biggest, uh, I guess, hurdle still is ha figuring out how to be efficient throughout a ball game so he can get deeper into the ball games because right now that swing and miss is it's electric stuff and then you'll hear about it as fastball certainly but all the secondary stuff that now is working off of that for him I think has been the key uh, to just really continuing his success now I know he'd like to have that start um, against the Mets to do over again which he <laughs> might next week, but that's going to get interesting down the stretch and you talk about like the NL rookie of the year they may have a couple guys who are stealing votes from one yeah. another I think Michael yeah. Harris could be in the mix and the kid they just called up I, I don't know how long he'll be here for them but it, he could also be part of that um, they, they they really have a number I think Braves fans are just really fortunate that they can see what the future looks like with an all already pretty young team, Alana. Yeah, you mentioned Michael Harris a second. That was my next question, Kelly. So good segue there in terms of he could steal some votes away from Spencer Strider because he's been tremendous. Not only is he having a, a very respectable average at 289, but he's 12 for 12 and stolen bases. And he's always a, also a very good defensive center fielder. What is your case for him winning the award? Well, I, the reason he was brought up was for his defense. So you mentioned that and watching him throw from center field to home plate and it almost be an automatic out because that's just how hard he can throw the ball and how online. I mean, he really is impressive defensively. It was never a question for Michael Harris. They knew what he would do for their defense out there, but it was offensively, as we know, rookies who come up, it's just a, this entire learning experience. It's totally different from, and keep in mind, he had never seen above double A. I mean, other than the first few games this season before he was called up. I mean, th this is a kid that had, I, I want to say it was something like 180 plate appearances in the minors before they brought him up. So that was your biggest question mark is what is he going to be able to do against big league pitching? And what he's proven is that there isn't really a moment that he's scared of, that he'll step up there and he'll work a plate appearance and he's, stays true to who he is and up the middle is all he's trying to do. And he's proved so far that that's a, a pretty good average for him at the plate. And I think just the even keeled um, upstairs mentally player that he's proven to be at 21 years old. We don't need to get into our stories of what we were doing at 21, Alana, but I can tell you <laughs> I was not nearly as mature as this kid is. So that to me has been the part hey. that's impressed me the most. <laughs> Hang on a second. I graduated from college and closed on my first house and flew to Scotland for a wedding all when I was 21. So I don't know what you were doing, but I had my stuff together, Kelly Kroll. I was right just going to say, okay. we, we just don't talk about my <laughs> 
Strider and Harris the second are the betting favorites right now for both of the uh, Rookie of the Year award. Okay, I want to ask you about this because it, it was a joke leading into the uh, segment, but do you have any idea who is starting for you guys tonight? So I didn't realize TBD uh, was still <laughs> being listed. He's been <laughs> listed quite a bit for us this season. Um, but no, I, my understanding is getting the um, email from the PR staff that the Braves are planning to go with Odorizzi tonight. It'll be Jake Odorizzi. And then Ian Anderson's supposed to get game one of tomorrow. Um, it'll be Spencer Strider in game two. And then uh, Charlie Morton rounding things out in the finale. That is their plan um, heading in, but as you as you very well know, those things can change last <laughs> minute. So I I would All expect right. to see Jake Odorizzi on the mound tonight for the Braves. And Jake Odorizzi is with you guys. Will Smith is no longer there. What was the reaction in the clubhouse? I I like the addition of Jake Odorizzi as far yeah. as a starter is concerned, but Will Smith has done some special things for the Braves, particularly in the postseason. Yeah, the Braves don't win the World Series without Will Smith last year. I think he, as well as everyone in that clubhouse, knew that this was a little bit of a struggle for Will Smith this year. He wasn't pitching his best. Maybe a change of scenery is a good thing for him, but it's also Atlanta's home for him. It's where he grew up watching the Braves. That was his hometown team. He rooted for them. So to get to put on that uniform, Alana, you know from guys you've heard that have had the opportunity to do that, it's just – it it feels different it um it, the whole the whole opportunity to do that for the team you grew up rooting for so i think for will smith there was this um bittersweet closing of a chapter that was so special but also knowing there was this opportunity in houston a place he's also pitched before so it wasn't completely unfamiliar to him um and i know that for the guys in the clubhouse anytime you can get a starter who's kind of got the um resume and pedigree that a jay go to and you know he's going to be valuable and with what they have going on in the rotation right now he's incredibly valuable with having to put max freed on the il the concussion mm -hmm. protocol and then ian anderson is actually after this double header he's going to be sitting down to gwinnett because for him it's been a little of a bumpy season as well so you got two guys that you're looking at shaking your head right now thinking it's a good thing we've got jay go in this clubhouse House if you're if you're on the team and and I also know though as you do what a veteran in the bullpen can mean to the chemistry of a team mm -hmm. and Will Smith was very much that guy for the Braves he was the guy that corralled all of the young relievers and they have a very young um, bullpen out there that made sure they got together every night right after a game and they talked through the game they talked through situations and then the next couple games where do you guys see yourselves possibly coming in how will you be ready for that moment will smith was that guy along with darren o'day and jesse chavez another guy that they sent away uh at the deadline and so i do think there was this understanding of you know we've kind of lost a big piece to our chemistry but jake odorizzi is going to be tremendous for us and I, I hate to say it, but as we all know, that's the business, and that's what these guys yeah. get used to seeing at the deadline. And it's just one of those where you you wish your former teammate the best, and you'll see him again down the road. But for now, you gotta you gotta embrace this new guy who's certainly gonna help you down the stretch. Well, they could very well see him in the World Series. At least he got traded to a contender, Kelly. I want to ask you about Von Grissom, and I loved your interview with him post game when he said he basically hit that two-run shot over the wall at Fenway, and then he just blacked out. What <laughs> makes him so special? Well, I'm still getting to know him. This is a guy, again, who 22 games, Alana, at double A. That's the extent of his, I mean, he played rookie ball last season, and that's all we've got to really sort of judge this kid on, um, who was playing high school ball just two years ago, it seems like. I mean, it's crazy to talk about 21-year-olds who are, who are not only just coming up, but making an impact right away on a team. And the one thing you can tell, though, just even in the interview, is that genuine joy he has playing the game and that was something that every i think um oh scouting report would tell you was the energy this is a kid that's gonna bring energy um this is a kid who knows how to work a bat an at bat uh even though he has <laughs> very few to sort of stack up against what what is coming but um the defense was one of those where like you know he's six three and i think shortstop he's he's only played seven games of those 22 at second base and that's what they're asking him to do right now so i think where you keep an eye on him is defensively how quickly can he get adjusted but i think at the plate they feel like he could make some noise again pitchers haven't seen this guy but more more than anything it's that energy and just 
um, youthful exuberance that I saw right away. And you, and you feel that and you appreciate it. Alana, you, you, as someone who did so many interviews, you know, you love when people can just be, um, unfiltered. A human being. <laughs> yes. And, and, and you understand that moment and you get to feel what it means for him, for his entire family, for everyone who was part of that journey. And it, it was really a storybook debut for a kid who grew up, not, couldn't wait to hopefully one day have that moment in Fenway, right? And he has it in his very first major league game. So, uh, so it was special. And he had such a, fun. such a great, great personality, great smile, Kelly, yeah. great interview. I think they're still looking for that ball that went over the wall, uh, at Fenway. <laughs> Thanks so much for being with us and, uh, enjoy Miami and, and good luck this series.